that shows a destitution of understanding of the physiochemical properties of pH control. No, no, James, not due to anything of the sort. False again. But no, that's not why it happens actually at all. You need to research this, James. You need to go and look it up and read all the papers on it. Absolute nonsense, James. Your whole point. Absolute nonsense. No. No, it's not okay, James. It's not okay at all to pass off disinformation. False. No such thing is true in fact, actually. The pH is the result of continuous flux of a forward and backward reaction, and the pH is a dependent variable. Your assertion is false, James. It's in error, and you owe me a formal and personal apology. What is next? Yeah, but the concentration of bicarbonate in a solution is also a dependent variable, James. Right, thanks for joining me once again, everybody, where I'm responding to James de Nicolantonio on his ideas regarding acid-forming diets. Uh, the background for those that want to know more about it is that I baited James a bit into a discussion with myself regarding this topic. Uh, he took my bait, hook, line, sinker, rod, reel, tackle, and half the boat, and having beat his chest, claimed his authority in the field, and behaved like a complete fool, he's now turned his tail and bravely run away, is what's happened, and has blocked me all over the place and pretends I don't exist anymore suddenly. So let's deal with James's ideas on this acid-base balance of focus on so-called dietary acid loads, and we'll put it right where it's wrong, which, spoiler, boys and girls, that will be pretty much everywhere. Off you go, James. Okay, so I am going to be discussing the evidence for why consuming a diet high in either animal foods or grains that is not offset by some type of base increases the risk for negative calcium balance. Okay, so first of all, that shows a destitution of understanding of the physiochemical properties of pH control in aqueous biological solutions, which I'll cover during this video. And secondly, a destitution of understanding of science at large, actually, James, because there are no studies that can inform us on risk. In fact, what's next? Which has been shown in numerous human studies, um, increases bone resorption, aka bone breakdown. In no, it doesn't. I've been eating a diet that you would describe as acid forming almost exclusively now for more than 10 years, James, and uh, that's not occurring at all. I can point you to a number of examples of people who have been eating the same way for multiple decades, up to and including one that's uh, now 67 or 68 years as a carnivore. Not dissolving and melting away, they aren't, no. In human studies, uh, looking at bone resorption markers, um, there are numerous studies showing that uh, basically alkaline supplements, bicarbonate or citrate, improves bone health. Okay, bicarbonate is not an alkalinizing thing to add. The concentration of bicarbonate in an aqueous solution is a dependent variable, James, not independent. It means you cannot independently moderate its value by adding or by removing bicarbonate ions from the solution. That is your first, probably and most flagrant, miscomprehension of the science underpinning this area. There's even studies that give out to three years showing increases in bone mass doing such. And, and what else, James? Were these people kept in labs and kept under control for three years so that we know absolutely everything that occurred by way of loading of those people's bones? Did we track absolutely every bit of food in and out of those people for three years as well? No? Okay, so let's move on, shall we? That eating high amounts of animal protein increases the loss of sodium. But it doesn't though, James, because otherwise I'd been dead a very, very long time ago. What about Maggie, the rancher from Canada? She's been eating a carnivore diet for 67 years, James. Why has she not fallen down dead from lack of sodium? I wonder. Uh, that is basically to say that the increase in urinary sodium exceeds the sodium that is coming from the meat due to the acid load and the No, no, James, not due to anything of the sort. False again. Increase in basically kidney blood flow and GFR that occurs because of the acid load. But no, that's not why it happens actually at all, James. And the kidneys are quite 
adept, quite expert in fact, at upregulating and downregulating their activity by way of the filtration rate in order to do what it is they're supposed to do, and that is to filter ions in and out of the blood precisely in order to maintain homeostasis of blood pH. The methodology by which this works is according to the strong ionic difference physiochemical model of the late Peter Stewart. You need to research this, James. You need to go and look it up and read all the papers on it. And when you've done that, you need to come back to me. You need to apologize to me publicly and formally for your error of, well, hubris, really, and, and a severe ego problem is what you've got, James. And, uh, you know, then we can start moving forward with a sensible discussion about how pH really is controlled in the human body because you have no idea, James. None at all. And also the increase in propensity for uric acid stone formation. Folks, again, uh, ask Maggie about whether or not she's had such stones in 67 years. No. Uh, how about Rick Rodriguez over 40 years? No. I'm into my 11th year. No. I could name you any number of people if you like. It just seems like this is a theoretical problem, James, that you've come up with that doesn't actually pan out in reality. So I'm going to be covering a little bit about acid-base balance in the body. Now, what you're going to do is give us a very clear, absolutely inescapable demonstration of your destitution of understanding of acid-base balance. Focusing on dietary acid loads, how we handle Well, there it is right there. Dietary acid loads, you say. No, not at all, James. This, and then looking at the clinical studies showing risks. No, there are no studies capable of informing on risk, James, still. Of not balancing high intake of animal foods or grains with fruits, vegetables. Absolute nonsense, James. Your whole point, absolute nonsense, no. Or uh, alkaline supplements such as sodium or potassium, bicarbonate or citrate. Well, we've already covered how bicarbonate cannot possibly be a pH controlling because it is a dependent variable in aqueous solution, James. Okay, so forget that. I mean, the other thing to understand is that pH itself is a dependent variable. There are four control levers possible in the correct physiochemical model of pH control, four and four only control levers that can be pulled to predictably affect the pH. And none of the supplements that you have named is one of those four control levers. Some of them affect those control levers a bit. We'll see how much detail we get into, though, depending on how this goes. Okay. No, it's not okay, James. It's not okay at all to pass off disinformation because you hold a PhD and a quite impressive list of publications, let's be fair to James. But this is an area in which you have absolutely not got a grasp of the most basic fundaments of it. Mostly because it's not taught, it's not well understood by most, even in academia. So it's no surprise that someone who lacks a bit of ability to think for himself might spout this ridiculous nonsense. Nonetheless, it's ridiculous nonsense. Let's deal with it. So, what is acid in the body? Basically, we call this hydrogen ions, which actually exists in an aqueous solution as hydronium ions. Okay, so James has operationally defined acid as the hydronium ion concentration. That's actually acidity, not acid. But okay, that's his operational definition of acidity. Fine. A pH concentration. Well, James, pH is a dependent variable still. Whoops. H3O plus. The base is bicarbonate, which can neutralize one hydrogen ion, and citrate is the other base, which can neutralize three hydrogen ions. Not so at all. Completely false, in fact. We'll, we'll cover that when we get to this bit here that he's going to say. So essentially what, what this schematic is showing, this is in the liver. This is what happens when we consume uh, animal protein, which is two to five times higher in sulfur containing amino acids compared to you know um, uh, basically beans and things like that but in the liver we oxidize sulfur containing amino acids to a minus two sulfate and we liberate two hydrogen ions false no such thing is true in fact what you've shown us there james is a stoichiometrically correct summary equation diagram what you've done is you've accounted for all the mass involved in that reaction system by putting plus 2H plus there in the circle, which you've now called acid because you're now inferring without a clear statement to the contrary that that 2H plus involved in that reaction system is going to have an effect on the pH by raising it by two, which is false. That is covered in great detail in an instructional video on my fine, fine channel. Folks should go and watch that. 
What's next though, James? What's next? Okay, which again actually exists as two hydronium. Now they don't actually exist in reality, really, James, as such, because the expected life span of one of those H pluses in an aqueous solution is less than 10 to the negative six seconds. Actually, the pH is the result of continuous flux of a forward and backward reaction throughout the milieu of the billions and billions and billions and billions of water molecules, in fact, and the value of the concentration that we can see, measure the apparent concentration, the H plus concentration, the pH, is a dependent variable. It cannot be independently moderated by adding nor by removing protons. We're done with that. Your assertion is False, James. It's in error, and you owe me a formal and personal apology. What is next? Ions. But that's what we in the field call acid. Well, only if you're ignorant of the actual physiochemical model of pH control, which apparently you are, James. In the body. And fruits and vegetables, they bring basically things like citrate or malate, uh, acetate, and other things as well that will get oxidized in the liver uh, to form three uh, bicarbonate. Yeah, but the concentration of bicarbonate in a solution is also a dependent variable, James. You cannot independently moderate it by adding nor by removing bicarbonate. What you will do is push reactions through an equilibrium system, the bicarbonate buffering system, which will have the result of evolving CO2 gas but it will not independently moderate the concentration of bicarbonate ions because that's against the laws of physics. Sorry about that. And that can neutralize three hydrogen ions. False, the pH is a dependent variable. It cannot be neutralized by a volatile anion that will evolve out of the system according to the value of Kc, which is variable according to the temperature, the pH, the SID plus and the ATOT minus. James, those are the facts of physics unfortunately, which are not in line remotely with your ridiculous model here. Okay, so that's the base. So this is this is sort of where acid is coming in. No, it isn't, James. The acid, as defined by you as the concentration of hydronium ions in the solution, is a dependent variable still. Adding sulfate will not have a meaningful effect at all on the pH. Fact. Sorry about that. There are really only four strongly dissociated ions that have a meaningful effect or could possibly have a meaningful effect over the pH of the blood and the interstitial fluid and the intracellular fluids. Those four ions are sodium, potassium, chloride, and lactate. The reason those four are the only ones that we are interested in computationally or, or by way of any kind of prediction of pH change at all, because their concentrations in the blood are orders of magnitude higher than anything else. There is a massive disparity. The rest are all bit players that make tiny little changes to a variable called SID+, which will have a very, very small effect on the pH. Very, very small indeed. It's covered on my fine, fine channel already. Perhaps you'd like to go and watch that, folks. Into the body by consuming either grains, which are higher in sulfur containing amino acids, or animal foods. And this is offset by fruits and low oxalate vegetables. Okay, all of that is false. Fundamentally false. False from basic first principles. False from an understanding of physics and energetics. It's a theology. It's not backed by science whatsoever. And with respect to this area of intellectual inquiry, science, all of that, James De Antonio is destitute of competence, and he owes me an apology. Fantastic. Join me next time when someone else will be wrong on the interwebs, because that doesn't look like slowing down anytime soon, does it? No. See you then.